Hi, welcome to Nasha's Art and my second tutorial on how to sculpt an ancient Egyptian scarab beetle out of clay. My previous tutorial I showed you how to sculpt this scarab beetle out of clay and this tutorial will show you how to paint it. Before we start painting I want to show you a little bit about the kind of colours we'll use and how to mix them and what they would have represented if we were ancient Egyptians. So let's start with our ultramarine. So ultramarine acrylic paint would look something a bit like this and the reason that we're using it is because it's going to represent lapis lazuli. Now lapis lazuli was incredibly important gemstone to ancient Egyptians. It was a symbol of immortality. So uh, we know that this particular beetle that we've been doing is inspired by the scarab beetle placed on Tutankhamun's chest. And the whole idea is that by putting the scarab beetle on his chest, it will help him to get through to the afterlife safely. And we talked in the, my last video about placing the scarab on the mummy's chest because they believed that by putting it there, it stopped the heart from speaking out against the person or saying any bad things that they'd done in their life and only talking about the best things that they did so that they could get safely to the afterlife and become immortal. Then we have a uh, cerulean blue, which I've mixed with a little bit of white and yellow ochre. So you can see there it mixed with white and then here when you mix it with a tiny bit of yellow ochre it takes on a slightly more turquoise hue and that would have been the, tur the stone turquoise. If you want to get the greener version you can just add a bit more of the yellow ochre. Then we have two options for the red depending what you have available to you. You could either use the orangey kind of vermilion red or the more sort of darker crimson red, either one would work, um, you decide. But those would have probably been either carnelian, the gemstone carnelian, or they may well have been coral. A coral had a particular importance in funerary um, uh, objects because coral, the ancient Egyptians believed it had like a tiny drop of divine blood in it and therefore would have been a protector, a source of protection for the mummy in the afterlife to protect the stone, the tomb and the mummy from evil spirits. And then we have this darker colour here and this I mixed the uh, crimson red with a tiny bit of blue ultramarine and teeny bit of this yellow ochre to get that darker colour. You might also have that ready made, um, it might come as red ochre or it might come as terracotta, so that's up to you. But those are the colours and a little bit of history behind it. So my clay piece is dry and I'm going to begin with the main scarab beetle. I'm going to add just a touch of white to my ultramarine and try to get capture that kind of lapis lazuli feel and of course it's important to make sure that you paint your clay when it's thoroughly dry if you are impatient like me or you are in a rush in a hurry you can put your piece in the oven but it needs to be at a lowish temperature and you can just encourage that drying process. I put mine at sort of 200 degrees and I left it in there for about 20 minutes. I didn't preheat the oven um, because I didn't want to sort of uh, shock the piece too much. I wanted the piece to warm up with the oven, if you like. So I didn't, because I didn't want any cracking. Um, I did put on an extractor fan and open some doors and windows just in case any kind of uh, gases came off. According to most clay makers you don't need to do that but it's always better to be safe than sorry. So I'm going to continue doing the base coat with the ultramarine and then I'm going to work in some gold flecks which I'll show you in a little while to, to get that real look of lapis lazuli. When painting the scarab beetle with the ultramarine it's wise to do several layers rather than just one 
because what will happen is if you just do one layer, the white colour of the clay will shine through and it won't give the richness that you need. It's also quite nice to add a little bit of another blue. Here I'm adding a little bit of ceridium to the ultramarine, which gives a variety and looks more authentic. In lapis lazuli, there are little gold flecks that we want to get on our beetle. There's a couple of ways I can think of doing that that would look quite dramatic. One is to use either real gold leaf, or you can buy sort of fake uh, copper leaf that's plated gold. Craft shops sell them, they're quite common. Or you could use a sort of metallic acrylic paint um, or real gold leaf. So I'm going to have a go with the real gold leaf just simply because it's the more unusual and the more trickier of the three techniques. So in here I have a little bit of PVA glue, just standard PVA glue and water and I'm going to mix that up together. You can see there it's mixing into a sort of watery liquidy paste and once it's mixed the next thing we do is we're going to use it as if it is size. Size is the proper um, liquid that people who gild or use gold leaf in their artwork use but for this we're only using a tiny bit and so we're going to do it with this. So I've got my thin brush and I'm going to just brush little areas of this on and with a dry thin brush I'm going to then apply the gold leaf and I'll show you how that will look. It's quite simple really but uh, it's obviously quite delicate so you need to be careful. So here's my gold leaf and actually I'm not going to worry about using the main bits. You can see how sensitive it is. If you just touch it a little bit it pulls off. But I'm going to just pick up with my brush some of these tiny little gold flecks and place them where I've added my glue. And you can see already they're sticking on. I'm going to add a few more, again putting my little areas of glue and water and again we'll do the same thing. Picked up a little piece there and I'm going to simply place it on and it kind of just sticks onto the glue and it looks like little flecks. So I'm going to continue doing that until I'm satisfied and I think it'll look really nice once it's varnished and shiny um, and, and quite pretty. So I've coloured half of the scarab in order that I can use that to show you how I've mixed those colours. And you can see them clearly as reference. The first thing I'm going to show you how I mixed was that turquoise blue. So I'm taking a acrylic cerulean blue and I'm going to mix a little touch of white, not much at all and a little touch of yellow ochre. That's that kind of sandy yellow colour that's really good for making turquoise. So I put my colours out and I'll show you how I mix them. So majority of blue, a little touch of yellow ochre 
and you can see that turns it slightly green and then a touch of white to lighten it up I don't know if you can see but with these I mixed different kinds of turquoise some slightly greener and some slightly bluer and I think that looks quite effective it mimics the turquoise stone which is often not uniform but you know a mixture of bluey colors and greeny colors so there we have our two mixtures there and literally it's just a case of painting those on The next bit is the lapis lazuli, which is really acrylic ultramarine. And that's simply a case of just painting that on. I am careful to leave a little bit of a gap around the little round circles, but I'm not too worried because I can then go in and cover any little discrepancies with the brown and the gold. So that's the next step and I'll put a little gold leaf just like I showed you with the bug, with the beetle. I'll put little bits of gold leaf on these sections as well. Don't worry too much if you make a little error or you paint the wrong section a different colour to what you wanted. The great thing about acrylic is that once it's dry you can always repaint over that other section and it tends to completely cover up any errors that you've made. The gold leaf on here and around the stones at the top and bottom, I'm going to varnish this mixture of PVA glue and water. And I'm just going to pick up pieces of gold leaf and basically fill it until it's full. It takes a while, it takes patience, but it's quite fun and satisfying. Of course, if you don't want to use gold leaf on this project, you can also use imitation gold leaf, which comes in copper and bronze and even silver, or you could just simply paint it with gold paint. So the last bit to do is the brownie bits, which I showed you earlier how to mix, which is crimson, ultramarine and yellow ochre. Or if you happen to have a ready-made red ochre or terracotta, you can use that. So for the circles, I literally just paint inside with the brown. And once it dries, I then add a gold dot in the middle, so it looks like these. And for the, for the outside bits, I colour in the sort of raised semicircle pattern that I created with my tool. And then later, once it's all dry, I go in with gold paint and paint the white bit around it gold. So we need to just brush away with a really soft brush any excess gold leaf that is sticking out. That can be just a gentle swishing motion. It can also be helpful because you can see any couple of little gaps that you might need to spend a few minutes filling, which I'll be doing later. 
Once you've done that, the final step would be to add the gold paint to the background and to the edge of the wings and around each of these little brown decorations. And the last and final step, which I'll show you in a little while, will be to varnish it to protect it and give it a nice sheen. So once you finish decorating your piece, you definitely do want to varnish it. That will give it a level of protection that you wouldn't get otherwise. There's different varnishes you could use that I could recommend. Krylon uh, Archival Varnish is great. It's a spray varnish, so you need to spray it outside because of the toxic fumes. And it comes in, like all varnishes, in satin, gloss and matte. Uh, Liquitex is a varnish I really love using. It goes great over acrylic paints. And again, it comes in the glass, satin and matte. And this one you apply by brush. Both of them are artist varnish, so they are non-yellowing, which is important because you don't want your artwork over time to take on a yellow, kind of yellowish, dirtyish hue because the varnish has gone old. So that's why artist varnish are important to use. Um, then my next step will be to varnish my piece. I've decided to use this one just because I don't particularly feel like dealing with the spray at the minute. And uh, I will be applying, applying that with a brush or you can also use a sort of sponge applicator as well. Here's a sponge applicator. People sometimes use those to apply varnish. I'm gonna be using a soft brush instead and you want to dip it in the varnish and just gently apply the first layer methodically over the piece. It really is that simple. Um, the only thing I suppose I could say is that if you were to use the matte varnish because you don't want a shine, sometimes it can create a slightly creamy whitish color that isn't as clear as you'd like and that usually happens when it's over darker colors so perhaps over the beetle a matte varnish wouldn't be best I would recommend either a satin or the high gloss that's my real only piece of advice with the choice of varnish that you use otherwise you're just gently sort of um, creating a coat over the different areas um, and avoiding air bubbles. Just go back over and try and remove any air bubbles that you see. Uh, the less you rush it, the less bubbles you get usually. I hope you've loved this tutorial and have managed to make something gorgeous. Please do check out my artwork on Instagram and Facebook at Nash Henkel Art. I'd love it if you liked and subscribed, if you felt like it and you enjoyed the project. And you can also check out uh, my other ancient Egyptian tutorials. I've got some gorgeous ones drawing different ancient Egyptian gods. I've got one about how to draw uh, Bastet, the cat goddess. And of course, I've got lots of other wonderful tutorials as well. So I'll put um, a little info card at the top and I'll put some in the description below. And all I can say is good luck with your future artistic endeavors and thanks so much for watching.